The people of the Emirates are the makers of its culture, the makers of the impossible. They dream big, act fast, and empower each other. This is what shapes a nation's culture. From all over the Emirates and across the globe, they are working together to make it possible. Barbecue doesn't fall under the umbrella of the culinary world. This is it, man. Starting an oyster farm in a desert. The thing is, is I almost felt like I was cheating because, just to give you an idea, in places like Europe, there's a three or four year growth period. So we started a pilot study here and checked on it after three or four months expecting sort of marginal growth. And we almost had market ready size oysters sort of straight off the bat. We immediately saw that there was, this was a high potential uh, species and then brought the project to Fajera uh, because the conditions were absolutely ideal along this coastline. Oyster farming can be totally sustainable and it has a, an environmental positive impact because the oysters filter the water. Also, they hang in these baskets and the baskets act as sort of a floating artificial reef. We were cooking out of the backyard since 2013. We were just having people over to the house before we even figured out what smoked food was. Just the regular air barbecue, shishtawu, kofta, burgers, we were inventing stuff, we were making stuff up. And then I went away to uh, Texas. I was there for, for my oil and gas job. Uh, obviously the, the, the guys that I was working for, they're like, have you had brisket before? And I'm like, no. I didn't think it was such a big deal, but I had brisket. I closed my eyes, I'm like, oh my God. I went in, uh, Brian Bracewell, God bless him, told him if I ever had a son, I'd call him Brian. I said, I'd like to work, uh, I'd like to apprentice. Thinking he's gonna be like, yeah, okay, buddy, you know, go take a hike. And he was like, all right, when would you like to start? And he took me under his wing, literally introduced me to the staff, he said, this is Hatem, he's from Dubai, we're gonna teach him how to smoke. We exchanged stories about them growing up in Texas, me growing up in the Middle East, the similarities between the way we grew up being in completely different places from completely different backgrounds, and what made us passionate about the food. It was like you were hanging out with people that you've known all your life. I always wanted to see the child in the house. It's like a child. So I started to have a passion for the food. I went to many countries and I wanted to try the food. The food was always amazing to me. يعني الشيء اللي خليني انا وايد اكسايتد اباوت ترافلينج واز فود Coming here having three children I was stay home mom and I just realized that I wanted to do something uh, I thought at that time that wasn't going to be too busy not 9 to 5 job but something that I actually like and uh, something I can control Coffee is in my DNA as a Harari girl from Ethiopia. It really is part of our culture. But my father left the village literally and became a doctor in the city. So it was really coming back home. I had to learn my roots, my background, my heritage through coffee. Dubai is mini world. So you have so many people with so many backgrounds and coffee evokes memory for a lot of people. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Here you go. Yalla, rub. More here, more here. He will, just keep rubbing. You just keep rubbing. Your job is to rub. There's no brisket here in 2014, so I'm flying back, no joke, flying back with brisket in my suitcase, get across um, customs, and customs will be like, Salam alaikum. I'll be like, Alaikum salam. I'll be like, What's in your suitcase? 
I'm like, uh, nothing. And they would open their suitcase and there's this giant chunk of meat in there. Two or three trips later, I figured, I'm like, you know, I can't keep embarrassing. I show up like dressed in a suit. I look like a respectable human being, but every time customs would pull me aside, I'm like, I can't keep doing this. So uh, I bought myself a smoker. I made obviously like hundreds of kilos of really bad meat. It got burnt. It was undercooked. It was overly spiced. I used the wrong wood until I started kind of finally getting it right. When we started inviting people and it was good, um, those people started inviting people. And then those people started inviting people. And before we knew it, people started calling my phone. Hey, uh, is this the Malta Farm? Can we order for next weekend? I'm like, listen, man, I'm in the middle of a, pre a presentation to Adnock. This is not a brand, this is my house. Introducing this product in the early days was challenging. People have their preconceptions. There's a lot of European chefs, a lot of French chefs, and, and they, of course, will die for their French product. Time and again, I would take these, these oysters in particular to French chefs and would be met with a certain level of sort of negativity and I would just be informed that they couldn't possibly be good because they were from warm water. Um, but we did blind tastings and we were coming out on top um, against imported oysters from all over the world. So I knew that the product uh, was really good. These are one millimeter uh, baby oysters. We plant them here. We'll maybe keep them here for a month or so, and then they go to the farm. What's incredible is these will be market size in about eight months' time. So these are, you'll be able, you'll be able to, to serve these and send these to restaurants in eight months' time. المجتمع يعني يمكن مش واعي لهذه الوظيفة أو الفكرة عند لهذه الوظيفة أن وين المستقبل فيها في فرق بين أنك أنت يكون عندك شغف للطبخ وفي فرق بين أنك أنت تتعلم أساسيات المطبخ فابتديت بالتنظيف ستيوردينج هي الكلمة اللي ما أنساها هي أول وظيفة كانت تعلمت فيها كيف كنت أشغل مكينة الصحون وبعدين كنت يعني أنظف بعد ما يخلصون طبخ وكذا فالشيء اللي تعلمته هو نظافة وسلامة المطبخ When I started, I did not have any network I didn't know anybody in the food industry or I've never had even the background of this and coming in trying to uh, sell my product. I don't necessarily fit in, you know, that Eurocentric look or, you know, that comes with a lot of tattoo, big mustache. As a roaster, these are the cool people of roasters, but I don't fit that profile. Before I had any clients, we rented a warehouse, bought a container of coffee. The container of coffee is 20 tons of coffee. So at that time, I was roasting at home. My first person who, to call me to taste the coffee, he didn't like it. I was, you know, when I walked out of that restaurant, I was in tears because he, he said the coffee was really bad. And, but, you know, with my friends saying, no, no, you know, you have to try again, which we did. And the second person, the third person loved it. So if I had stopped at the first person, you know, things would have changed so much. I was getting divorced when, when I was setting up the Matar farm. It was a disaster actually for me. I, um, it was probably the hardest year of my life. Uh, I had a hard time seeing my kids because I had to reinvent myself. I lost my crew. I lost my family. Everything that I lost, I had to throw into finding the Matar farm, right? And that idea that, uh, you know, when the kids come back, I want them to have this. The guys that put their hands in mine 
The invest... I gotta call these guys my brothers, they're not even investors. We got the Matar farm officially off the ground with no paperwork, no contracts, no business case, no business model. We didn't run Excel sheets, we didn't run numbers. I fed them brisket, we shook hands and we started the Matar farm, just a, a gentleman's agreement. So I gotta say, I owe those guys everything that we are now. The Motar Farm is where we live. Uh, the Motar Farm started off as an idea to get Tamara and Hannah engaged in the outdoors, like dirt under their fingernails. Uh, we had chickens, we had ducks, we had rabbits, we had our own fruits and vegetables. Instead of the digital life that everybody's used to, it, it was an analog life that we grew up having. Being a working mom is very difficult because you can't do both perfectly, but I really have great support uh, with uh, neighbors, especially when raising the children. I have great friends who help me with picking up the children, dropping, so the support has been amazing. Be a pit master, they said. It'll be fun, they said. All right. In winter, they said. Yeah, and <laughs> Remy and I uh, met and, and we talked about me going out to the farm. His farm is underwater. Obviously, our farm is above ground. And um, we were supposed to smoke oysters. And uh, obviously, you can have oysters raw. Um, but you can imagine what live fire does to that flavor. You know, this but, uh, is the first time I've ever shucked an oyster. Okay. I swear to God. <laughs> All right, nothing can possibly go wrong yeah. here. Okay. Everything crossed. <laughs> As hot as it gets. Those charcoals are white hot. Then, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah! نحن نعتبر الأكل جزء لا يتجزأ من الثقافات العالمية. لأن الأكل في البداية يجمع الناس يعني في المناسبات في المحافل. فدائما يكون في أكل. الأكل هذا أعتقد ترفلكتس حضارة كثرة اللحم وكثرة مثلا الرز وكثرة وإنك تتوصف المكونات وتزين الطبق هذا يعكس ثقافة الكرم. I think Dubai expedited my say success being different it actually allowed me because it's such a small community when people heard how good the coffee was it was easier for big doors to open. Because when they pop, we don't want everything to just drain Yeah, out, yeah, yeah. So. And they really do pop, eh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to stand back a bit. Okay. <laughs> do you want to use the tongs or are you just going to throw them in? The, I was previously in renewable energy because I, I felt I wanted to be a producer of something. I have never been shy about shifting between industries. I feel it's all about the opportunity. I did my research and felt comfortable to go for it. That, that charcoal. Charcoal. Uh, there oh, we go. <laughs> See, it drew you in. <laughs> that me. Aquaculture is the only way forward, really, to meet our food security requirements uh, all over the world. If you can get people around a dinner table, you'll realize how similar people are as opposed to how different. كلمة شغف هذه لازم تكون فعلا عندك فعلا تكون عايشينها في هذا المجال. My mom was a working mom. You know, she allowed us to think everything is possible.